Ben Stroman, who's the Deputy Postmaster General of the United States, in Detroit today to unveil a stamp with Rosa Parks' face on it. Yes, <coughs> you know, we've tried to chronicle uh, American history in our stamps. You know, one of the uh, mandates of the Postal Service is to bind the country together with our postal products. And one of the ways that you bind the country together is to really recognize turning points in American history. We could think of no better turning point than to honor Rosa Parks, uh, who really, in a lot of ways, began the modern civil rights movement, sure. who really continues today uh, in really the promise of f fulfilling the promise of democracy in the right, Constitution. Right, right. So, so tell me about the process, though, of yes. deciding who gets a stamp and when that happens. Well, that's a great question. We have literally thousands of suggestions that come in all across the country every year for stamps. And we have um, an organization uh, of real experts who meet, who decide, they're artists, uh, they're historians who look at all of the recommendations and come up with, you know, 12 uh, every year uh -huh. uh, and decided that this year, given the fact that this is going to be her 100th her birthday, 100th birthday right. that this would be an appropriate time to recognize Rosa Parks. But it is a very intense process of review, historical analysis, and then recommendations. Right. And, and not everybody gets one. Not, not everybody everyone, gets a stamp. Not everyone gets one. Right. It's unfortunate, but not everyone can get a stamp. But, you know, it's really based on the contributions that people make to American history or other things around the country. Sure. And uh, it, it is a, it's a wonderful process. Recommendations then go to the Postmaster General who makes the final decision. Yeah. And, and talk to me about the image that's on the, on the stamp. It's a picture of her. Yes. Uh, it looks like she's sitting on a bus. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if it's taken from a photograph. Yes. Or Our, the artist who did this is uh, Thomas Blackshear, who's one a uh, noted artist uh, in the United States. And all of the art are all of our stamps. People try to really capture the essence of whoever it is or whatever uh, is being displayed on the stamp. This was one that I think he chose and chose correctly that shows kind of a quiet but determination on her face. Yes. If you look carefully, you see the strength of character right. in her face. It's her eyes. It's, it's the her look in her eyes. That's exactly right. Uh, in this photo that really tells you this is not just some. Um, a uh, tired woman deciding she doesn't want to stand up. This is a civil rights warrior saying enough. Exactly, and I, and I think the thing that's so interesting about it is that she does display both of those qualities. It is this quiet, dignified woman who I think really resonated with the American people, but the resolve in her and her history of activism uh, as a, you know, working with the NAACP and other organizations yeah. to really fight segregation is really captured, I think, very well in the stamp. Right, and so these stamps, uh, you present these here today. Can I go buy one tomorrow you, or you there? Absolutely, <laughs> right. they're gonna be at post offices all around the country today. Uh, okay. In fact, you can buy one you here today. You can buy one here at the museum today. And they are out. forever stamps, which means that, you know, that you'll be able to use them for, for the rest of your life. Um, and, and I think the, the thing is, for us as a postal service, uh -huh. having uh, an image that goes around the world, I think really reflects as much on the country as anything else. Right, right. Uh, we also have a Martin Luther King uh, stamp. Uh, it's another civil rights leader. It also took a while oh, to get that one. Right? Absolutely. It, it, it <laughs> took a while, less, less time, but we have great civil rights leaders on stamps. Uh, we have everybody from Booker T. Washington, who right. was the first African American on a stamp, to Mary McLeod Bethune, Sojourner Truth, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. I mean, we really have tried to chronicle all aspects of American history and the civil rights struggle, those who were leaders in that struggle, we've tried to capture on a stamp. Yeah. In fact, um, this year, uh, January 1st, we unveil the Emancipation Stamp, Emancipation right. Proclamation, which is the right. 150th uh, anniversary of the Lincoln signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. And then in August, we're going to unveil the March on Washington Stamp. Right, because the, well, this is a year of very big anniversaries, not Absolutely. just uh, Rosa Parks' 100th birthday, but important uh, anniversary of the March on Washington as well, and, and the Emancipation That's right, and I think the brilliance of the decision to honor Rosa Parks was not just Rosa, but it, it was to this trilogy of events 
that seem to coincide with different aspects of anniversaries. You couple those together, and you have really a powerful symbol of American history. Right. Uh, they've uh, named this a day of courage. Yes. Uh, it will be that day from here on out. Tell me what that means to you in uh, 2013, courage. Well, I, I think, you know, so much of what gets lost in history is how dangerous um, the events were back in the 1950s. Sure. And how much courage it did take <laughs> to stand up for things that you believe in. It's hard to imagine now, right? It, it is hard yeah. to imagine now. I mean, I think it does get lost. A lot of the uh, young people, and even uh, those of us who are older, don't, didn't really recognize how much courage it took to stand up, to go to jail, to risk death sure. in those circumstances. What it means today is that I think the same spirit of courage, we need to be able to stand up for things we believe in as Americans and take courageous stands if need be uh, and not be moved by what happens to be popular or not popular at the time, but really what is in the bedrock principles of the United States in, in America. And I think her courage really inspires me and I think all people who have an opportunity to read about her and to see her on a stamp. Yeah, right. No. And now we'll have her on a stamp forever. For we'll have her on a stamp forever. You know, I was talking to somebody just coming over here, and her daughter is 12 years old, uh -huh. and asked her to buy some stamps for her, Rosa Parks uh -huh. stamp. And she was reading about her in school. Right. And she learned about her. And I think that's one of the great things about what we try to do on the stamps, is that you want to spur dialogue, conversation about how America about really... Who this, who this was, exactly. what she did, and what it means now. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So if we can get young people more engaged in learning history, writing letters, yes, right. Right, the whole right. writing That's process, right. writing letters, not emails, not right? In, well, <laughs> I have nothing against emails, but I think just there's something very there's personal something special about, about a letter. Right. About, Still, about a letter. Now, Still something right. very personal yeah. about a letter. So I think what she was saying is that young people are still excited about this yeah. whole learning, about stamps, right. about letter and writing. And about our heroes. And about our heritage. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. That's exactly right. Great to have you here in Detroit. It's great Look to be here. Look forward to stamp unveiling. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yes.